Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and tonight I am on my way to the airport. Tomorrow I'm going to Amboise in France for a few weeks. I'm going to be looking for treasure, but I'm also going to be learning and exploring and getting as much as possible of that into my illustrated travel journal. I will be posting from the road and talking more about that in a, a another video soon. Today I thought I would show what's in my carry-on bag. Yes, art supplies, you guessed, you guessed that right. But a lot of other stuff too, because this is not just a carry-on bag, this is a survival kit. You know why? I am an optimist. I believe in looking on the bright side and possibilities, uh, as opposed to looking at the negative and limits. But when I say that experience has taught me that flying and traveling can, can easily be an ordeal, that is not pessimism. That is straight up reporting. So as an optimist, I'm going into this expecting the best. And as a realist with hard earned experience, I'm going to prepare for the worst in that bag. Let's talk about what I'm going to wear. No, not fashion. What I'm going to wear for comfort, for survival. Layers. No matter what time of year it is, you cannot tell if the AC is going to be cranked up or if it's going to be hot and stuffy. So layers. Underneath this is a tank top. Long sleeve t-shirt. I have a light cotton sweater that goes over this and then a light jacket that goes over that layers. To top that all off, I have this. Now this is called a waterfall cardigan. It's a cardigan in the sense that it does have sleeves, but it doesn't button or fasten. It's just got this, it's just drapey. And I don't really put my sleeves through it. I can't be bothered, but I do wear it as a shawl, which means that yes, one, it is adorable. But also you can use it as a blanket or uh, some kind of covers and you can also wrap it up and make it into a pillow. I have a couple of these. They are by DK, DKNY and as often is the case, I have a saved search on eBay and when one comes up in my price range, I think about it. I'm also wearing this. This is not really haute couture. This is a fishing jacket, fishing vest. But you know what? This thing may not be high fashion, but this thing is genius, genius. And that is because pockets. Here is a Velcro pocket. So hard to nick anything in there. You know, no, nobody could really pickpocket that easily. Then the, here's another pocket. And here's another one. Three pockets. Three over here and here. I've got some for my pens. I've got my e-reader here. I've got my mp3 player here. I can collapse my headphones and they will also fit in this pocket. And here again in a almost tamper fruit tamper-proof pocket are my passports. Now, not only is this really efficient, it's great if I'm going to be in a situation that's hectic, and I might, uh, coming up on check-in or security, for instance. If I get to security and the line is three blocks long, and it has been, I've got something to read, something to listen to, and my boarding pass is on my phone, which is in my pocket. So I don't have to root around in my bags, uh, not finding what I wanted in the first place and holding up the line. So this thing, somebody should win the Nobel Prize for this. Let's see what's in the bag. This is not the sexiest bag in the world. I have cuter bags. What it is, is regulation size, 
down to the last centimeter, this is what airlines would like to see you carry. This means a couple of things. One, it's always, always going to fit in the seat in front of you, underneath there, without being squashed in to make it fit. It's also square and easy to get into and find things, which is not the case with a backpack. Also, because it's regulation size, I like to think that it sends a signal to anybody working in the airport or the airline that you halfway know what you're doing. And if there's any circumstance that you're going to come into where you might need the benefit of their doubt, that might help do it. Or that's my idea anyway. It also has this, because um, let me tell you, you need all the help you can get these days, sometimes. It's got this great little strap here, which means it will sit on top of your suitcase, and then you put that over the handle, and it holds it onto your suitcase so it doesn't go flying away. Inside, this is a, a pocket made by Bagalini. Bagalini is a line of sacks and luggage that was actually designed by flight attendants. Um, because they wanted something really light and practical, and there wasn't anything out there. So all of the Bagalini bags have lots of pockets, and they are super light. Inside of this one, I have my e-reader. I will transfer it to my vest later, as needed. Passports in a zipped pocket. And then I can zip this one so they're they're pretty safe in there. This is my phone. It's also a Bagalini wallet and my cards are in here. It's another pocket and then my MP3 player. See, these are my liquids. You may know that you have to put liquids in a plastic bag to go through security. See, this is some lavender oil, essential oils for uh, attitude adjustment. Ditto this, it's a Bach flower spray. If I was to actually get stranded in the airport overnight or something, this is spray melatonin, which is really good to help you sleep under weird circumstances. A tiny hairbrush. A really tiny toothbrush. And look at this. Have you ever seen such a wee little tube of toothpaste ever? Lip balm thingy. Hand gel, and then this is a uh, hand cream. I have mentioned a couple of times that I carry an e reader. Now, that may seem ironic given that I am a book artist, but if you get stuck somewhere, if you have an e reader, you have thousands of books, and they don't weigh very much. Uh, I have some edifying works that I want to catch up on. I'm reading some of the nature mystics. I have some history. I like that a lot. Uh, but I also have plenty of mystery novels and PG Woodhouse. Something funny. Just in case. Just in case I get stuck. I have my MP3 player. And there's a, too much to list on here. But let's just say that you will find... A lot of Yo-Yo Ma, Sparks, and Lucinda Williams. This is where I carry my phone when it's not doing the video. And uh, I don't watch a lot of stuff on my phone. I prefer to read. But prepare, preparing for the worst means that you got, I'm got, I've got my phone loaded up. I have downloaded a ton of French lessons, I'm learning French, uh, so that I can listen to those offline. 
I have nature sounds. So again, if I have to sleep uh, in under lights, sitting up, I've got those lovely uh, nature sounds and soothing music. I do have a couple of movies on here just in case. Both star Fred Astaire. I don't know about you, but if I'm going to be stuck somewhere way longer than I want to be, I want to be stuck there with Fred Astaire. Snacks. Snacks are good because um, the terminal that I'm flying from often doesn't have a coffee shop open until uh, after my flight's left. Huh. So what I do is I take my water bottle and I fill it two-thirds of the way up with very strong iced tea. Put that in the freezer. Hope I don't forget it when I'm walking out the door. Then I can add some fresh water to the top, and by the time I get to the airport, about five hours later, I have some nice cold uh, caffeine in the form of iced tea there. I need a little bit of boost. Healthy snacks. If I feel sorry for myself and I want to buy something not good for me, uh, I can do that in the airport. But if I want to stay on the straight and the narrow, I like to bring my snacks with me. I can always decide later. I also have a vegan bacon and cream cheese sandwich. Uh, it's comfort food, it's delicious, and I can control the calories. I have a couple of extra masks. Ah, I have this mask. This is a sleep mask and it's silk. And again, if you in, uh, end up staying somewhere longer than you thought where you're going to have to sleep sitting up, this is a great thing to have. As is this. This is an inflatable neck pillow. You just blow here and then it just goes up like a balloon and it's really, really helpful. And you can let the air out and it's flat and weighs just about nothing. I have a notebook. I do carry a proper diary with me when I travel, but uh, it's in my big suitcase. I don't want to carry something that heavy in my carry-on bag. So this will be good. It will let me take notes if I'm working on a project, and then I can also use it as a diary. This is this is a, a different kind of a diary. It's where I write down some uh, prayers and thoughts and uh, writings from other people that inspire me. And it is a little bit a little bit heavier than than I would like. But when I have when I have been stranded, this has given me a lot of uh, solace, a lot of solace, and it's good to have. I'd rather leave off something else and take that. I actually have a folder of things that I'm working on, but I think I left it at my flat. And it's just got calendars and lots and lots of notes about um, upcoming courses, about things I've got planned, a residency I'm applying for. And uh, it's if I everything goes smoothly and I don't need them, that's fine. But if I get stuck somewhere for three or seven hours or more, then I love to be able to, to work on things and get my ideas down. These are my uh, electronic things. I have two chargers. This one is retractable. You know, I think I got this at Big Lots in Mississippi way back in the day. And then this one is, uh, this one's for my MP3 player and this one's for my phone. Most of the time these days, you can charge your devices with this USB uh, port right into the seat that you're sitting in on the plane or at the gate. But just in case, I do go ahead and bring an external USB port so I can plug it in to the mains wherever I am. I also have this external converter because I am meeting a friend in the Charles de Gaulle airport 
uh, we're going to travel together. And he's coming from Kansas and he has a connecting flight, which means there is a very, uh, wouldn't be the biggest surprise in the world if something got delayed there. So if I have to wait for him to arrive, I'm going to need a converter for things like this and things that might be in my suitcase. And then um, this is uh, UK to EU. And my art supply kit. And this is the beating heart of my survival kit. If you saw, last year I did a, a what's in my portable art studio video where I showed a very beautiful fancy artist's roll. And that was a, a present to myself for a big birthday I had last year. And it's so beautiful, but you know what? Um, I actually like my old messy one better. This one works better. And uh, like I said, when you're traveling, you got to make things as easy as you can. This is, uh, I will put a link to the company that makes these. I'm not paid for this at all, um, but I like these. I have several of them. They're made from nylon pockets, lots of pockets. You can see here that I like it so much that I had a mishap with some fountain pen ink back in the day. You can actually unzip it so that it opens flat. Very easy to get to things in there. Inside I have a very small watercolor kit. It's Sennelier. And it's just the basic colors pretty much, but I could mix whatever I want. I'm not going to be doing a lot of painting in an airport, just enough to work in my illustrated journal, paint what in front of, is in front of me, and that'll do. I have a bigger watercolor travel set in my big suitcase. This is just for the carry-on bag. I do treat myself to a mixing tray. This one I got on Etsy, and it's nice and light. It's surprisingly light, and it really helps me if I want to mix up my colors on the go. I Again, I have a proper sketchbook in my big suitcase. I'm going to be doing a lot of work on this trip in, in my travel journal. But for the duration, I have this portable one with paper covers. I just got this. Uh, it weighs very, very little. The paper's not bad. And you know what? They're only like two or three bucks. Anything that I work on, I can then tear out and glue into my proper sketchbook when I get situated. An eraser and a sharpener. A glue stick. It's great because I may want to start working on some found paper collage just in the airport. You'd be surprised what they load you up with. Here in the pockets, I have a bone folder so that if I am working on that found paper collage, I can make those nice and flat. What you don't see here are scissors. You have to be very careful. If you go through and leave your scissors in your kit, they will take them off of you at security. I've learned the hard way. So I do have those in my check bag. These are some water brushes. And inside of a water brush is this compartment that holds a little bit of water. And then when you squeeze, it comes right out. And then what you can activate your paints and just get to work without having to worry about whether you've got a water source or not. These are great. I have them in a couple of different widths. Actually, I think I only have medium and big. I, I have more, but I don't use them, so I leave them home. These, if I do have a water source, I actually do like to use a portable brush. 
they like that and then you post on the back and now this is a num number nine it has a good feel in the hand and this is another one this is an eight and i can post on the back like that and now i can work it's kind of a luxury but they don't weigh much and it really makes for nice painting especially again if you're going to be somewhere way too long uh, this is a, a fountain pen. You cannot use a fountain pen on a plane. The change in air pressure will make it, um, uh, yeah. Again, ask me about the time I used one while wearing a white suit. Not even kidding. This has brown ink, I think. Does this have brown ink? And it's nice for adding some detail, but I also use it for writing in my diary. For drawing in my sketchbook, I have a couple of art pens. This is 01 and 02 for fine drawings, outlining sketches. And then this is just a, a pilot. It's got a 0.5 nib, a little bit bigger for adding lettering and text. Uh, this is by Pentel, and it's just a fancy old pen for the fun of it. I have a couple of these. I really like them. And you can actually add refills, so uh, they're fun. And it's yellow, so it cheers me up if things are going south. I carry a very few watercolor pencils. These are ink tents in the couple of colors that I might use, and a green one, green watercolor pencil. I always carry a water soluble graphite pencil. These are really good because they're water soluble, which means that's just going to straight up turn into a wash if I need it to. See, like that. And as I work with a lot of buildings and old things, to have that gray wash is really nice. I like that a lot. So that's the water-soluble graphite pencil. And then this is just a plain old pencil pencil. So you can see that my Survival Kit Art Studio is quite a bit smaller and more compact than the one that I usually carry. I have videos of what's in my portable art studio, longer versions, uh, showing the kinds of things that I carry when I get situated that I will be using in cafes and churches and gardens and things like that. So if you're curious about what that looks like, you can find the video links in the text below here. You can also find links to my website and to my online course, Teaching Illustrated Journal Making. Okay, I have to go pack now and find more healthy stacks. So until next time, au revoir.